Today on Making Cool Stuff, we're gonna do an easy upgrade that will work on any 3D resin printer. When I bought my first 3D printer, it looked like this. As many of you know, the first thing most people print are upgrades to the printer. First printer now looks like this. Everything is different, except for the basic frame of the printer. Fast forward to the purchase of my first resin printer, I was a little surprised on how few upgrades are being done to the stock printers. My resin printer stayed stock for a couple of months until the weather started getting cold. The two type of resins I use are blue and tenacious. Both resins are extremely durable, but with that comes a high viscosity. Printing with these types of resins in winter can cause problems, so a heater is needed inside the printing chamber. And that will be the upgrade today, a small low powered heater to keep your printing chamber and resin warm. Let's get started. So for this mod, you're gonna need very few things. Uh, the first thing you're gonna need is an actual heater. It's called a PTC heater, and you're gonna want a 100 watt one. This is what it looks like. It just consists of a fan, a heating element back here, and it's all in like a little plastic case. Next thing you're gonna need is a thermostat. This is the W1209WK. It's a cheap thermostat. You can get them for a couple of bucks from China. It has a temperature sensor on it. And you can use any one that you want, but this one's nice and cheap. It's only about $3 and uh, yeah, it works pretty well. Next thing you're gonna need is a power supply. So power supplies can be any type. It can be the metal brick type. It can be a computer power supply or it can be a brick, but it needs to be uh, 12 volts and it needs to be about 10 amps or more. Even though these things are rated at 100 watts, they're not actually pulling down 100 watts. They'll only pull down about 50 watts. So a 10 amp power supply would be perfect. This is the one I'm gonna use. It has a barrel jack connector. It'll be mounted Mount it to the back side of the photon for easy plug and unplug. And the next thing you're going to need is some 3D printed parts. This is one that's actually going to hold the heater inside of it and the thermometer. It's going to be the main one. And the next one, let's see if you can see it right here, is a little tiny one. This is going to hold the temperature sensor. It's going to go in there like that. And there's going to be magnets attached to the back that hold it against the, uh, the unit. You don't need this if you just want to set it in there. But it's a nice thing to have. Next thing you're going to need is magnets. These are 5 by 2 millimeter magnets. You're going to need a couple of them. I already mounted them right here. You're going to need four right here. And if you decide to do this, you're going to need two of them for this. Next is wire. 18 gauge wire will do fine. This is a little thicker and it's the only stuff I had on me, so I'm going to use it. But it doesn't need to be this thick and it doesn't need to be this silicone stuff either. It's just what I had on me. And if you want to make it look really nice, you're going to want a barrel jack connector if you use the same power supply that I did and a switch to turn it on and off. The last thing that you're going to need is a back to your printer to actually house the switch and this. If you're using a photon, an any cubic photon, uh, I'll have a link down below for one that I've made that'll house these. So let's get started building this thing. Okay. So the first thing is to take this apart. Okay, once it's apart, you have your fan, you have a little spacer, the actual heating element, and a housing. We're not gonna need this, because that is what this 3D part is, print, is for. So we can throw that out. Thread that into there. Put 
put the spacer in. And then screw it back together. So we now have that attached. And now let's go over the wiring. Comes with a little piece of paper that'll kind of show you what to do. We are doing the 12 volt, 12 volt connecting mode right here. So what's gonna happen is our power is gonna come in. So this is the, the, the power in the ground. So our power is gonna come in. It's actually gonna go to this, to our fan, and to this unit all at the same time. The ground on the other hand is gonna go to the fan and the unit. This ground for the actual heater is gonna hook into one of the empty plugs over here on the side and we'll get that all wired up. But what it's actually doing, it's gonna have power all the time inside the heater and this unit actually grounds it to let the power go through. So let's start hooking all that up. Okay, so here's some other hookup wire I have. This unit is not gonna take a big current draw going into it so I don't need a nice I don't need a large wire like this going into it so this little one will do just fine okay this unit right here how it's gonna get wired up is pretty simple 12 volt coming from power right into there and they're nice and tight now the ground the ground is actually gonna be both of these right here both the middle two and the one that goes to the heater is going to be on this end right here. So, we can actually push the heater wire through and put that in. Because that is the only thing going to it. Now the last thing is ground. This wire is going to be way too big to put inside there. We're going to need something a lot smaller. Okay, it's pretty much ready to install. Oh, there is one last thing we need to do, which is mounting these, the tiny little magnets. So, need something to hold this guy. Okay. Now we are ready. Let's install this. So the easiest way to install it is just throw it in, hook it up to 12 volts, put your temp sensor in here and turn it on. But we want to do a much more uh, permanent solution. So let's get started on that. So first thing is get out your bed and your tank. Okay, now that we have that out, you can see right back here, there used to be a fan in here. I took that out and then also the carbon filter, which was this. The reason I took them out is because all that fan does is take the smell from the resin and blow it straight out into the room. So we're actually gonna replace that with a little cover and the cover has a little hole in it to be able to put our wires through. So, real easy. Let's get the unit ready by putting the wires through. And we're gonna feed the wires down through the bottom. through this little metal grate right here. Okay. 
put that there for right now and flip it over. So now that we have it flipped on its back, let's remove these four screws. Now when I remove that fan, I just cut off the wires and use some tape to insulate it. Getting back to the board and actually unplugging it is a pretty hard task, so I just did that. Here are those wires that we fed through. Let's get them nice through here, all the way. Okay. Now one of these wires is gonna end up going to a switch and then to the plug. The other one's gonna go straight to the plug. So let's start wiring it up. And then we have to get the back plate ready before we start soldering them in. This back plate has an ethernet jack in it uh, if you haven't done the Ethernet jack mod, you don't need to install it. Um, I have two backplate versions up on Thingiverse. There'll be a link down below. One with the hole for the Ethernet jack, one without it. So if you do have the Ethernet jack, just plug that in first. First thing we're going to do is the switch wire. Because the switch wire does need to be fed through the back. The other one doesn't. We made that mistake. So let's pretend the switch. Solder those together. And the other one, we're going to take a little length of black wire. Solder to that. Okay. That can now be thread through the switch port. And we now have our switch installed. Next thing we have to install is the power jack. The center post right here is going to be the 12 volt. And the post next to it is going to be the ground. So first we will solder on the 12 volt. And then we'll do the ground. Okay, we're all back together. Switch works. You can throw this on the front of that DC jack. But I'm sure that the friction fit would have been fine because that thing is really in there. Now let's pick it up. Okay, now we have to get this little plate inside here. Make sure that's down. Okay, and with that little plate being down, pretty much installed. And the last thing we need to install is this right here. That is going to be the temperature sensor. So here's that little piece that we printed out earlier for it. Oh, two magnets, little plastic piece. Feed that in, feed the cable right in, kind of turn it a little. And then we'll stick it right here on this metal. Make sure that wire's out of the way. And there it is, completely installed. Can't even see the temperature sensor in there. This looks nicely installed. And we are done. Now let's do a print. I got my printer plugged back in. We're about ready to see how this thing works. Uh, I'm going to turn it on and see how long it takes to actually warm up. Wow, that was quick. Uh, that was a lot quicker than I thought it was going to be. Uh, it only went up uh, about three degrees Celsius, but still that is pretty good. Uh, the other thing to note is instead of using a 10 amp power supply, I'm only using a five amp power supply because that thing's only pulling down about 50 watts. So I, I was able to get away with a five amp power supply. Uh, actually, it's pulling down even less than 50 watts. So uh, I, I think it's pretty good. It's a success. It'll be easy to print that blue 
resin with this. 